Chaps, I've got Ricky. Um, Ricky, mate, I'm resisting the urge so badly not to go all like Bianca. <laughs> Ricky! <laughs> oh, it's got to be done, mate. Got to be done. But no, you contacted us a couple of days ago. You're, you're a boxer? Yeah, so, yeah, um, I'm, I was a competitive boxer um, and I moved into boxing coaching. Um, and, yeah, obviously, I recently just booked another fight in and was looking to do a fundraiser. Um, and that's how I come across your charity. Well, it's happy days. Thank you for choosing us, man, because it, it really does help out, really. It means my wife's not nagging me, saying, <laughs> why have you spent money on this charity when it's a charity? But anyway, I, I digress on that. But after chatting, Matt, I wanted to pull you in because there just seem to be more than meets the eye of just some boxer, coach, professional, it doesn't matter what the buzzword is, who just mm -hmm. wants to do a fundraiser. I'm like, there's something going on here. And after was having a bit of a, a, a natter and a bit of a thing, I'm like, let's pull him in a video, see what he's all about. And I think more to the point, what, why, why do you, why do you give a shit? About I love that question. Yeah, no, why do you give a shit? It's just such an important thing because, uh, like you said, I want to do a fundraiser, but apart from, um, you know, helping a charity carry on doing good by fundraising, talking is important, and that's why I love your charity. Look, like you've pulled me in straight away, and we can have a chat. And for me. I'll tell you the truth, my, my thing, my sort of, I won't say battle, but my area of mental health personally has always been social anxiety. Yeah. Um, so boxing, people might think like, what are you talking about? You're gonna have social anxiety and you go and jump in a ring with another bloke and whack each other for five rounds or whatever. But believe it or not, that's the reason I ended up in the boxing world. Yeah, yes, yeah, su mate. Suffering with like social anxiety, challenging yourself is important. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. like, yeah, I, I don't know about anyone else's um, own personal mental health battles, but social anxiety is like it comes a lot from self doubt. Yeah, it, it, it does. Yeah, but it, it's I, I've done a video myself where I, I noticed I think COVID triggered it a lot more. And my social anxiety was getting so bad, I was like, I need to nip this in the bud. And yeah. I ended up jumping on the Eurostar and, and going to do a load of charity work in Brussels on my own, even stayed wow. in a hostel, mate. Like completely, I don't do hostels, I avoid people. But it got so bad, I was like, I need to do something. So mine was a bit more extreme, where yeah. I went on the Eurostar, walked through, walked through Brussels, Brussels, stayed for right. a week in a Into hostel. the deep end. I had to do it. I had to do it, mate, because I was just yeah. like, yeah, I'll, I'll do therapy. Yeah, I'm on the happy pills and all this kind of stuff. But for that, it was, I had yeah. to nip it in the bud. No, I love that. And just for anyone that's watching this, that hears social anxiety and thinks, oh, what, so no parties, no going to social events and that. That stuff, it does trigger it, but yeah. it's not just the case. Like, honestly, some days I'm in a better space now, hence why I'm trying to do the fundraiser, et cetera. But... When it's at its worst, it's like going to the shop. Yeah. <laughs> Go, going to see your barber and get your hair cut, you know, anything. Walking the yeah. dog, you know, it gets it gets super intense. So yes. uh, what you've done and challenging yourself is, is so important. So for me, the challenge was always boxing. Yeah. So can, can I ask you then, uh, just through, through, it's weird. I, I, used to, I used to DJ. Right. When I say about me having social anxiety, people just like Dan. You used to minute. You used to like MC at Fabric. I used to like DJ at Ministry. Now I've been there, done that. Like Bagley's. I don't know why my phone keeps making noises, so I apologise. Um, but like I used to DJ at like Bagley's, like in front of thousands of people, pretty much every single weekend. And they're like, well, how can you go from that to basically being a bit of a recluse and worried about nipping to Tesco? And I think. Yeah. I'm trying to work out. I think it's because that was my, that was my front. Yes. That, that was sure. Is that like you when you get into a ring? Like, is, is your anxiety ever stopped you getting into the ring? So I think obviously your personality traits will come into it. So I don't know if you was always musical and into that stuff, but yeah. I was always a little stuff getting into fights. So yes. although I had social anxiety, I was ready for boxing. Yes. So in a way, it was like, right, if I challenge myself and get in a ring, it gives me a bit of confidence and I think, oh, I can do this, I can do that. I, the social anxiety comes down a bit. Yeah. In reality, you're actually boxing yourself into another comfort zone. Yeah. I feel if you really want to, like, I'm going to bring up um, a statement you said off camera. 
And it was when you said, you know, you either suffer with mental health or you can live with it. Yeah. And I feel like if you truly want to live with mental health, because it's something you do have to work with, it doesn't just dissipate after one miraculous thing. I really think you have to do new stuff. Yeah. Not just the stuff you're comfortable with. And that that brings you, it's almost like gaining a little level on it. Like your social anxiety is this big thing that you're dealing with. And every time you do something um, outside of your comfort zone, you're just chipping away at it a little bit. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, I've and, it, and it might come back, but you just keep chipping away. You keep, you live with it, right? So Yeah, no, well, you, you have to. And I've said this before in videos as well. It's just, we can all hit that rock bottom. And in the rock bottom places, it is crap. It is, it is horrible. Mm -hmm. It really is. And yes, we will always get ourselves at 99% of the time. It might, it might take a while before people shoot me down. We'll always pick ourselves up a little bit. Then one day we'll slip back down again. But we'll never actually quite hit that rock bottom again. We just yes. get higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. 100%. And we have to just, and we're just, just for, yeah, again, through my perspective, is I, if I slip down, which I did a few weeks ago, actually, I was completely and utterly burnt out. I should know, I should learn my lesson, mate. Do, do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, should, I should know better. You said and done. No, exactly. I run a charity, a, a recognised charity. I should know better and I still fall foul. But mm -hmm. I find personally, when it comes down to mental health and just from the stories I've seen, we're so focused on being in that bubble of being down. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? We need to just let that go. Go. Do, do you know what? My life's just been, my life for the last couple of days is a bit of shit now, but I'm out of that. Let's move on. Yeah. No, it is. It's, it's taking the, the good and the bad like together. Because yeah. I think when you're, you're, you're dealing with certain aspects of mental health, once there's something bad, that's it. I don't know about, I think this is the case for most people, but my mind just focuses in on it. And then the relentless thoughts start like, oh, you fucked up. You're stupid. You're not good enough. Da, 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 da. Next thing you know, your confidence goes boom, your self-esteem's down, and you feel like you're starting at zero again. Yeah. And in reality, it's okay to have a moment like that and then, and then bring the good in as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think we get stuck, right? No, no, we do. And it is... No, we, we, we do. And I, I think when it comes down to things like social media, you know, it's like, especially when you have an anxiety attack, a depression attack, it doesn't really matter what it is. When you're in those little bit of bubbles, the first thing you do is start, in my case, start scrolling through social media. That's and a then, like, yeah, and then you're like, you're comparing, you're, you're comparing yourself. So why, why has Ricky got this? Why has why is Bianca got that? I had to get that from <laughs> I, I had to, I had to do it. But Bianca got me no more. Yeah, no, but it, it's, it's, it's just... I don't know why I was going with that one, so I lost my mojo on that. But it's, we can, we just keep comparing. We need to stop comparing. Yeah. For sure, for sure. And it all depends where it stems from. Like for me personally, when I was younger, I had certain people in my life that was very like, um, uh, you can't do that. Why are you doing that for? Uh, you, why are you acting stupid all the time? And just, when you're young, that sort of stuff, you don't pay attention. You think it is what it is. And then later in life, when you're attempting to do certain things, certain challenges them little voices stay yeah so yeah i think if i could say anything to anyone that's got social anxiety or like any i think this goes across for all aspects of mental health in a way if you are in a really bad place i know the worst thing i've done is instead of trying to rewire them thoughts and think better of myself and do good challenges i just went right fuck everyone because <laughs> I'm pissed off, I feel bad. And I ended up, like I said, boxing is very easy to motivate yourself with that attitude. Yeah. So I thought it was a good thing, but you have a little bit of a level up from that. And then what happens if you use them bad emotions to motivate yourself and try and get out of your struggle with mental health, it's very hard to be normal in like social situations when you're in that mind zone. Yeah, yeah I'm getting shit done, yeah, I feel good. Someone yeah. says hello, fuck off. I'm on like, <laughs> do you know yeah. what I mean? Oh, well, you so, do that as well, do you? <laughs> well, no, but that, so as I've gotten older and more experienced with living with social anxiety and mental health, I've realized like you do have to challenge yourself in a better way where it's not personal to anyone. It's yeah. not, oh, I've been treated like this and I feel like this, so I'm gonna go out and smash it. No, you need to go out and smash it because you know you value yourself. Yeah. You want to do it for you and 
you know, you might help other people along the way as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, so, so with you then, with you then, who, because you, you're a coach. Yeah. But when, if you're getting, have you got people around you who are just like, Ricky, yeah, yeah, I'm really trying not to, I'm really trying hard not to do the Ricky. Hey, I've got it there, there's done there. But if you've got people around you of like, Ricky, like your, your anxieties, do, do they clock on about your anxiety before you do? Not really. And that's, and I think, so the thing is, I think people don't like talking about stuff like that, which is why this charity is so great and these conversations are so great because it is a normal thing. Yeah. But I think a lot of people will just see triggers and things happening and they'll just be like, oh, well, I'm not going to mention nothing about that, you know? Yeah. I, I've got good people around me. And yeah. we like, might not talk too upfront about it, yeah. but they, they check in and I'm blessed. You know what I mean? They check in. Oh, what's been going on with you? Like, getting on good today blah, blah, blah. so yeah. yeah i can't complain and i think yeah. some people are missing that which is yeah I, more yeah no i i'd agree with that but i i personally think yeah again i'll keep saying perspective but just for me and my, my life what i what i find is a lot of people when they're like oh i think this person's acting a bit weird with their mental health something's wrong with them yeah they go straight in of just like oh ricky like you seem like you're really depressed or whatever else and we yeah. will jump into that side of it. Of like, how's your mental health? You're going to kill yourself. Literally jump into the most extreme. It's yeah. like, Ricky, mate, I think you're just being, are you all right? You just seem a bit different. You don't need to use the terms mental health. You don't need to use anxiety. Yeah. Just say, are you all right, mate? I've just noticed a bit of a change. Yeah, for sure. I think we just yeah. overcomplicated the whole conversations. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, it's a delicate little nuance. Like, you know, sometimes... <clears throat> Yeah, just checking in in a normal way is helping with mental health. But like you said, you don't have to put a big spotlight on it and go, hey, yeah. are you weird? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's how it goes still sometimes. No, it does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, you feel like you just want to go to bed and hide under the duvet like everyone's looking yeah. at you. Yeah, yeah. Well, sure. but do, do you know what, Matt? And this, this, I'm just going to give a real bad example. I think we're going all over the place, so I apologise. The, yeah. the, the other day, I was in a shop. It was like a health food shop or something like that. It was me, me and my boys. And, you know, you get them people where I like talking to people, but this person I was really struggling with, they were just giving their views after views after views. And I literally just stood there for 10 minutes and I could see their mouth moving, but I just wasn't processing. I just couldn't cope with this person. I started to struggle with it. And then my anxiety was creeping up. Next minute, my youngest, he, he's 11 years old, comes over and says, dad, dad, come over here, come over here. Could you buy me some of those sunflower seeds? And I'm not like looking at him and it broke the conversation. And I looked at him, I was like, okay. And we went in the other room, got these sunflower seeds. I'm like, why do you want the sunflower seeds? I'll tell you. And he was like, I'll tell you that when we're outside. Went outside and went, what are you going to do with this big bag of like two pounds worth of weight of sunflower seeds? He goes, I could see you struggling with that woman. So I wanted to help you break the conversation. Wow. And I was like, well, you still owe me one pound ninety because I don't want the sunflower. <laughs> you definitely ain't about to eat all them, yeah. Do you, do you get what I mean? But we didn't have to talk about that. We didn't have to talk about anxiety. We didn't have to talk about mental health. It was like he, my eleven-year-old son, because I'm open with him, yeah. my, my both for both my kids, even my wife, my eleven-year-old son could see little telltale inside of me. It was like, okay, let, let's get him out of this conversation. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing that he noticed. I'm well, that, chuffed about that, isn't it? Yeah, he he's so in the zone. Like he noticed that. Like most kids are just oblivious to things like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, we still haven't done anything with the sunflower seeds. <laughs> they just sat there in oh, a paper bag. He's but... a bit older now, but I suppose most kids will try planting them somewhere. Yeah, well, I think they've been skinned. Up, yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll sort something out with them, really. And he still hasn't. Find him in the garden, back. scattered everywhere soon. Yeah, well, he still hasn't paid me back the one pound ninety either. I'm going to hold him to that. And that. Sure, so... there's some chores. The chores waiting for him. He can yeah, pay yeah. off the debt. A bit of washing up. So, so, so with you yourself, and what kit? I know, obviously you. You got the box and forward to draw to close. What 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 keeps your head straight at the moment? So at the moment, I feel in a better space, and I've accepted that it comes in ups and downs. You know what I mean? So I don't take the downs too diff like too hard at the minute. I just uh, try and set myself challenges to bring myself out. But at the moment, um, the boxing coaching is just amazing for it because. Yeah. I enjoy boxing. So if someone confident walks in the gym like a little peacock strutting around and he's ready to go or she, that's fine. I love it. And I'll teach you boxing because I enjoy it. So that's good for my mental health. And obviously they get their service. 
but you do get a lot of people come into a boxing gym that have zero confidence and they do you do they are very timid and you can tell they've taken a big step to get there so it's a massive privilege for me yeah. to be able to be confident in that zone of my life and be like yo i'm here to help yeah and and bring that confidence up in this one area and a lot of the time they, it carries over into other parts of our life so it's very rewarding man it's, it's fun to do no, it sounds like it, but that also surprises me in a good way because I, I remember I was raised in care and all this kind of stuff. So I was I was arguably a bit of a bad lad. And I remember I remember there's one one once when I got nicked, this copper was just like, You are you are angry, you're gonna end up inside. Literally that whole thing, you're gonna end up inside. Go go to this boxing club. Yeah. And when, when I when I started doing it, I did it for quite some time and then I had a head injury and I got banned for like two years. So I was a bit gutted about that. But anyway. Mm-hmm. So when I was doing it, like it was literally all the naughty kids were being sent to go to boxing, sort them out. So it's nice, it's nice to see a change. Mm-hmm. Actually, people are doing it to gain their confidence because without question, it will sort out your anger issues. It will, it will give you yeah. self control. But it is nice that people with no confidence are coming to people like you actually because it hands down it gives you confidence. Yeah, and and, and social media. I know, we, like you brushed on maybe like some negative aspects of social media earlier and effects it can have, but. That's why it's so great if you use it in, in, a, in a good way because where I'm open on it about me having daily struggles and whatever, but people are still seeing that I'm running a boxing gym and I'm out here doing things, other people feeling like that, they seem to just like a moth to a flame. They're like, yeah. oh, Rick, like, how are you doing this? Da, da, da. Do you know what? I'm going to have to come down and see you and try a bit of this boxing. Yeah. So it kind of works like that, to be honest. No, good on it. Do, do many of your clientele open up about their own mental health? Yeah, I've honestly, obviously, I, I, like they probably know they're after watching this because I've known for years, but I've had at least one person ring me out of the blue and just openly say, Rick, I, I need to come see you at the boxing gym because I'm on the edge, mate. Like, I, really? I, don't, I don't know what to do with myself. I'm feeling really down. It's been going on for ages. And he goes, I've seen you go through that. But like, I've seen you like exercising and boxing all the time has kept you straight. So I yeah. want to come try it with you. So some people are really open like that. Yeah. And then other people, they just, like you said, it's not said, but you can notice little triggers and it might be in the boxing gym a little bit timid and whatever. Yeah. And you just slowly see them come out of that shell. Yeah. And that's the main thing, isn't it, really? Getting yet again, like I was saying earlier, sometimes you just don't need to just go jumping straight in. Are you depressed, mate? Are you anxious? <laughs> Literally, just you don't need to bring it up. Just work with them. They'll open up when they're ready. Hundred percent. Yeah. I, if if people don't mention anything, sometimes I don't. I don't yeah. bother. You know, I've got a young kid who's training with me now, and he really struggles to take in um, directions. And if, if we practice something, he has to do it loads and loads of times. And I'm always bantering with him. I'm having a joke about it. And I'm like, "You got earplugs in today, or what?" And you know, we're just yeah. chatting back and forth. And then he really tries hard. And it wasn't until the other day, I feel terrible because I forgot the condition he said he's got. He said he's got like a condition and it makes like learning difficult for him. Well, okay. he can't take information in. And he goes, for the first time, Rick, like I'm with someone. He goes, in school and that, they always treated me like a dummy, put me in special things. He goes, you're the first pe- person that's just treated me normal and just got yeah. on with it. And he goes, now I actually feel like I can get on with it because I don't feel weird. That must that people. must make that must make you feel good. Oh, it's amazing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because so, when you do it yourself, it's almost like looking at another you. Yeah. You know. Absolutely. You well, it, it, sounds, it sounds like it'll probably be, when he gets more strength, probably be an animal in that ring. Yeah, he'd probably beat me up <laughs> for shouting at him all the time. <laughs> no, pro- probably not. But no, it's all good. That was a good video, my friend. Well, I enjoyed it. Listen, I didn't know what to expect. Obviously, you just kind of said this have a chat, but. That's yeah. That's why I love the charity, mate. It's it's good to see fellas just talking a bit openly like this and chopping it up. So glad to be involved. Excellent. Let me hit that on the call button thing. Give one second. Oh.